We do not want fights in our game. 100%. We do everything we can to, to prevent fights from occurring. But if a fight breaks out in our game, we need to know how to properly adjudicate and do all of the things. Let's look at fight scenarios today on Five Play Friday. Stick around. Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Five Play Friday, the show where we look at game video analyze so that we can get better as basketball officials. Greetings again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with abetterofficial.com. We craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. Allow me to thank our fantastic show supporters, Dan Kelly, Tyler Matlock, Thomas Hennion, Mike Wong, and Phil Harmonic. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? There'll be a link in the show notes below. All right. Today we're looking at fight scenarios. National Federation of High School Rules fight scenarios. Now, it's easy to find brawl videos online. Chaos ensues, people out of the stands, ridiculous situations. We're not focusing on those today. We're focusing on situations that can occur in our game and we're going to, and the game is going to continue and we're going to have to adjudicate the plays properly. When we look at plays, we're going to look at them forensically as well, right? We ended up with this, but what happened at this point? Was it addressed? What happened at this point? was it addressed, right? We need to look at the habits that maybe led to something not being observed, right? We have to remember, it's easy to see, uh, you know, higher level officials, NBA officials, NCAA officials who have access to video review, maybe display some habits on the court. We as high school basketball officials have no such luxury. We can't emulate uh, the look away travel by the official. We have to observe the players because all we have is us, right? So we want to look for habits that maybe lead to a disconnect and non-observance of situations that lead to the fights. All right, let's get started and look at our very first play. I wonder why that happened. Okay. So, interesting play scenario. We have action. We have the game of basketball occurring. And then away from the game, we have two players engaged in fighting. Right? This is straight up. There's not a lot of decision making that has to be made here. This is fighting that's occurring. Play is stopped. People come onto the court. The officials have an awareness of who's coming onto the court. Do they? Etc. These are the things we have to look at. Ultimately, the players are separated. These players are extremely upset. And ultimately, one of the players is taken out of the visual confines, off of the court, into the locker room. 
How are we going to adjudicate this play? What are the things that we have to be aware of? We have two players in a fight scenario. Those two players will receive flagrant fouls for fighting. Those players will be disqualified from the game, right? Really straightforward. Does anybody else participate in the fight? Does any bench personnel leave the bench when a fight is occurring or may break out? These are the things that we have to do, and we have to know how to adjudicate this play properly. So, let's break down the play from the outset. Let's go back to the beginning and watch it in real time. Live ball. Live ball. This is fighting during live ball. These are flagrant fouls for fighting. These are not technical fouls. That's a, 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 a clarification, not a big deal. Play is stopped. Those players are fighting. Coaches admit, you know, people from the sidelines, people out of the stands, come in and separate these players. These are adults. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on with pink 15 or the pink play the pink person the, the pink adorned fan who comes out? Wow. They are participating. Not a factor though in uh, the adjudication of the play. Messi But no other players participate in the fight. We see an assistant coach from the white team give a stop sign to her the the team members on the bench so nobody from white comes off but multiple players from gray or from black come onto the court when a fight is occurring or a fight may break out this has to be penalized each of the players who left the bench entered the court when a fight was occurring or may break out receives a flagrant technical foul and is disqualified by rule. If in this instance, let's say we have seven team members who do that, we could count them and that's going to be the responsibility of the officials. So we got one, two, three, four, five, All right, let's say we have five. Let's say we have five. And we are uh, going by NFHS 100%. You know, you see the behavior of the players, right? What are they doing by entering the court? They are just, it's almost like they're just responding as human beings. Uh, you know, they're sort of drawn. I need to help, etc. There's no energy. There's no negative energy. Um, that's coming, they're not like, okay, let's go, right? Let me find somebody or whatever, right? Which you could certainly imagine that scenario. But these players by rule have violated and they are assessed those fouls. And if we went that route, right, that's five. We add each player on the court, flagrant, one team foul added for each, five off the bench, flagrant technicals, Disqualified by rule, five team fouls added to the team foul count. The coach receives an indirect technical foul, regardless of the number of players or the number of team members who left the bench. With one left, they receive an indirect. If two left, they receive an indirect, one indirect. If three left, they receive one indirect, etc. Right? 
So the proper adjudication of this play would be the two flagrant fouls, those offset, technical foul for players leaving the bench, two free throws for White, and the ball for White at the division line opposite the table. One indirect technical to the head coach for Gray. They have now lost their privilege to stand and coach their team. Right? So this is a situation where a fight occurs in our game. But it's not a fight that leads to the conflagration of, uh, you know, everything being ruined, right? Fights, uh, extraneous fights from others, mothers and fathers and brothers and cousins and, and what have you, the storming the court, etc. So we, we are going to resume this game, right? And so that's really key to, to recognize. In addition... In the end, one of the players is removed from the playing court, right? We know that disqualified players by rule must, go, must remain on the bench, right? But there are extenuating circumstances here. There's case play that supports if a player is so upset that, you know, their presence is going to affect the game negatively, right? Could, you know, this player is so upset, they are going to be taken to the locker room and dealt with there, right? That is legal by rule. There's nothing that says, oh, no, wait, we got to bring that player back and they have to sit on the bench. It's not a prison, right? We want players under adult supervision. This player who's going to the locker room will be under adult supervision. If the other player was going to the locker room as well, under adult supervision, we would certainly want those adults to be aware and not allow any, uh, any, anything to happen after the fact. Right. But since we are going to resume the game, we have to know how to adjudicate plays properly, right? And so if we just go, right, we could say, look, come on, man, like the players, they weren't, they just went a few feet on and then they were just trying to help their teammate and there's no negative energy and they're just observers, et cetera, gray area, gray area, right? That's fine. If, if we're going to treat it that way, we're going to treat it that way. By rule, these players are, are disqualified with disqualifying technical fouls for leaving the bench and entering the court. And we can never go wrong if we adjudicate by the rules. Right. If we said, you know, nobody really did anything, what have you, and and uh, we're just going to say every, everything's good, and the opposing coach says, wait a minute, wait a minute, those players are gone, etc. You know, they're star players over there. She's on the bench, uh, and makes a deal about it. Uh, you know, what are we going to say? No, we're setting aside that rule tonight, coach. Right. So, understanding the proper adjudication leads us down the right path, right? If we understand what the proper adjudication is, we are in the best position. A great play scenario to get us going because it's one in which the game will continue and we need to know how to adjudicate the play properly. Let's look now at play number two. All right, this is a great habits and fundamentals scenario, right? We want to look at what are the habits and fundamentals of the officials in the situation, right? We have little fires on the court 
that could become big fires if we, if we don't handle things properly. We have a ruling on the play. Right. So the other thing is situations occur in our game and there's a bit of chaos involved. Right. In this situation, there's a bit of chaos for the officials. They have to sort this play out, make an adjudication on the play and do all the things. So we want to look for habits and fundamentals here. And we're going to resume play with no free throws and a sideline throwing. All right, I believe they uh, ruled a player control foul by the dribbler and then some offsetting technical fouls or something like that. Right, which is all well and good. We're going to make a ruling. We're going to do the best we can. But let's look at the play. Right, we have this action. We have a foul ruled now during dead ball. We have this contact. And we have this contact. We got officials coming in and the players are separated, right? Which is great. All right, you go to your bench, right? We get the number of the player and then we release them to their own recognizance. And they immediately cross paths. <laughs> uh. Right, direct. What are so? What's going to happen in this situation? Are we just going to like uh, go report and and we have to sort some things out? First thing we need to do. First thing, right? Once these players are separated, everybody to the bench. Everybody to the bench. That's got to be rule. You know, the first thing because we have work to do as a crew to sort this out, etc. We have tension. We have players in close contact. Right, and we get this, um, we get the the energy between the two players, all, you know, away from the action here that we have to go address. If we direct immediately respond by directing the players to their benches, then we don't have any of that energy to worry about, and we can communicate as officials about how we're going to adjudicate this play. Right, so let's take a look there. Right, when the foul occurs, habits and fundamentals of the coach. Tension, stay, stay. <laughs> I love it, I love it. It's so helpful to keep things from getting messier, right? The great habits and fundamentals. We wanna look for those you know, same positive fundamentals uh, and habits from the officials on the play. And they display some great awareness, right? But their, their awareness, they're kind of chasing their tail a little bit in that they haven't prevented the players from possibly interacting further. Now we're going to get together and we're going to communicate, all right, what do you have on this play? We, I have a, a, a displacement by the dribbler. That's the foul. And then we have double technicals, et cetera. We're not going to uh, have anything for the, play, the two uh, players away from the ball. And then we have communication with the coach by one official, not both coaches, one coach. <clears throat> and then we're going to, you know, we're talking about how we're going to resume play. Maybe we want to emphasize, so we have one foul on the white dribbler and then a technical foul on the white dribbler. Make sure all the technical fouls are added to the team foul count, etc. We want to have a great communication there. And now we're going to have a separate communication with the opposing coach. And we have this bit of milling around, et cetera, right? When we come out of that conference between the officials where we have decided what the ruling is on the play, we are going to communicate that ruling with the table. We are going to then move the game forward. Once we've ensured that we've communicated with the table, they have all the information that they need. If we need to involve the coaches with some explanation, let's bring the coaches together, explain the ruling, right? When we explain a ruling to coaches, this is not a time to 
for them to uh, offer opinions about wh where we may have gone wrong with our ruling, right? We have a uh, player control foul, double tactical fouls on these two players. We're going to resume at the point of interruption, double tactical point of interruption, which was a sideline throw in for blue. This is not, I appreciate that coach. That's what we're doing. We're moving forward, right? Simple, straightforward way to communicate. So a great play scenario to help us look at habits and fundamentals of the officials, things we did, they did fantastically, things that maybe could offer us an area of improvement. We want to take the fantastic and be warned about the ways to improve so that we can get better ourselves. Let's look at the way the officials potentially contacted the players and how we would potentially risk liability. Again, habits and fundamentals. Right? High energy between the players. We're coming in. Official bear hug turns the player. Right? Nothing happens in this situation. But imagine, imagine negative things that could occur when we have that behavior. Right? First of all, putting hands on players. Right? It's, a, it's an instinct. I want to separate these players. Right. But if we have the player's arms pinned and something happens, he gets sucker punched. Just think about the liability that's that's uh, incurred in that situation. Right. We have made that player potentially defenseless. Action occurs. We're opening up a window there. Right. So what could we do otherwise? Right. Use our body. Just get our body between the two players who there's tension between, you know, boxing out of basketball fundamental, right? We could back that player out and say, nope, 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 right? And back them out or some fashion. We're at risk ever always of grabbing players, embracing players, etc. right? So that's something to take away from this play as well. Anytime these situations occur and the officials converge Right and give up that overall awareness of of the um, potentially players coming off the bench, etc. The big picture views. Somebody, right? We we respond as a crew, and this is great. This is great. We can always respond with our instinct is to go to you know moth to the flame is to go and help at the spot, but we have to recognize, be aware of what our crew is doing. Right? If I've got two partners who are going in doing the same thing. Maybe I'm the one who has to say, wait a minute, okay, you guys handle, I'll go big picture, maybe I'll offer some guidance from behind, some, hey, hey let's send them to their benches, hey, everybody, to your bench, to your bench, ba, 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 to your bench, let's go, right? I can provide that and have a big picture view, et cetera, but if you are the third official going in and you see those other two there, understand, wait a minute, wait a minute, habits and fundamentals, somebody's got to stay back. Right. Okay. So this is another great play scenario because it brings to bear all of the things. Did, you know, we have to make a judgment. Were these players fighting? Right. There was, you know, that's that's a key judgment on the play. These players were assessed technical fouls for dead ball contact and not ruled to be fighting. No players appeared to have gone off the bench. So we're moving forward. Let's take a look at play number three.
All right. Right. So we, we have a dead ball. I think we're, we have a foul that's being reported. We're going to shoot bonus free throws. Player think uh, the official thinks it's a sideline throw in. Then we're going to move. Right. And we obviously have two players who do a little bumping, a little, uh, there's a little embellishment there. There's something's going on between these two players and then boom. Right. It's just going on. So we have the two players who are involved. Obviously, those players will be d disqualified for fighting by rule, right? We have to have an awareness, though, of the, the additional players, right? Black 10 or black, yeah, black player, white player, right? That's where we make our bucks. <laughs> So a white player had gone in to the fight scenario. Are they there as a peacemaker or are they participating in the fighting? And then a black player said, get off and pulled the player away. The player ultimately goes to the floor and we see the energy between the two players, right? Which is not hostile, right? So we have to make judgments there about whether they participated in the fight. Let's watch the white player come in. Hard to tell. Hard to tell whether the white player was going at the black player or trying to get her player, right? But what would be really helpful in this situation is if we had that awareness, right? That outside official should provide that information. We've got adults coming in. We've got players over on the bench who are like, you know, huddled together, not, not coming onto the court. This game will resume. We need to know how to adjudicate properly, right? And we also need to remember our point of interruption. If we are going specifically with those two players are receiving dead ball flagrant fouls for fighting. Those players are disqualified by rule. As a result of their action, there will be no free throws and we will go to the point of interruption. What is the point of interruption? Free throws. Right, we need to remember that because that's how we're going to resume the game. Hey, can I ask you a quick favor? If you're finding this video content valuable, take just a second. Hit the like button below. Really helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps to get the video in front of more basketball officials so that we can all get better together. If that's all we assess penalties for. Things continue. And we have to make a judgment about the two additional players. Right? If we uh, consider their actions to be, you know, the white player who came in, uh, if we consider them to have participated, that would player would be disqualified. And then we would have an imbalance in our flagrant uh, technicals. If we considered the action by the black player throwing the player to the floor to be fighting, then we would have something different as well. But we could certainly see that as being two potential peacemakers trying to create separation and maybe not fall into that category. But if we just go with the two flagrant fouls for fighting, <clears throat> those players are disqualified by rule. We're going to resume at the point of interruption which would be, in this instance, free throws. Okay. Excellent. Let's take a look now at our next play scenario.
All right. This is a good one. Right? We have a foul calling official. He's got a block. Okay. All right. I, I, I'm here for it. He's got a block on the play. Right? The player who was upended by this blocking foul uh, is not happy and steps up and punches the opponent in the chest. The opponent is like, hey, man, right? I'm not here to fight. I'm a lover, not a fighter. So how are we going to adjudicate this play, right? This is a good one because we're going to just have to do all the things. And it's a situation where the, the game is going to continue, right? This is no situation where uh, out of the stands, you know, a conflagration occurs. This is really straightforward. We're going to assess penalties and the game's going to continue. Now, if we look, we've got what appears to be varsity players on the end line. Like this is the end of a JV game. That we're waiting for the game to end. Sometimes it's natural in this situation, if if the situation is heated, the game's not competitive for the the coaches to agree. Hey, let's just call this game. The tensions are rising, etc. But let's assume that we're going to resume the game, and we have to adjudicate this play properly. We have a foul of some sort, ruled a blocking foul, and we have a retaliatory fighting action during dead ball by the offended player. In addition, we've got a teammate from White who comes in and has some action on the play. We have to judge that action. Is this action fighting? Right? We need to make that judgment. What do we expect in this situation? Teammates are going to come into the into the into the frame, right? So, let's look at the play on its merits. This player, this defensive player, measures up his opponent and intentionally takes his legs out. This is, at minimum, an intentional foul. In my judgment, this is a flagrant foul, right? This is, you know, he lowers his shoulder and, and <laughs> come on, man. This is an attempt to injure a player, right? Hard fall, the official, right? What, you know? Again, we want to look at habits and fundamentals. If we see this play occur, right, what's our first instinct as officials? It's like, ah, oh, he just got him. Yeah, you're right. A little bit. Yep, yeah, that's a block, right? This is not a subtle play. This is a hard foul at minimum. What do we need? We need to get to the spot and let everybody know we are there and understand what may happen next. So habitually, hard foul Boom, go in. Whether you want to uh, make the ruling on the foul, etc. right? We have a block here. That's fine, but get in proximity. That doesn't mean he could have prevented, right? But we want to look at habits and fundamentals on the court, right? Habits and fundamentals. I see the hard foul. What do I think? Get there. Get there. Prevent retaliation, etc. That's That's the habit and fundamental that we want to display. Now, let's make a judgment about this player who comes in. And what do they do? They use their body to get between the two potential combatants. Right here. Uh, let's go. So, does this additional player, are they fighting? No. No, they are not, right? So we have a hard foul. I would judge this to be a flagrant foul. But then we have a fighting action. Now we know, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, right? Somewhere in the back of my mind, I think if the foul, le or if something leads to the fight, then the thing is, right, that refers to a technical foul, not a flagrant foul, that case play, that ruling, on that, that, where we could say, look, if you have an unsporting action that leads to a fight in retaliation, then both are considered fighting. So in this situation, in my judgment, we have a flagrant foul on the defender 
And then we have a flagrant foul for fighting on the offensive, on the white player. And now we need to know how to resume our game, right? And this is sort of the point of why we're going through these exercises. How are we going to resume the game? Now, we could say this, uh, this, that maybe the coaches agree and the game is over. But if they, let's say the, tour, the score is tied and there's 30 seconds remaining in the game and we need to get this play right. So how are we going to adjudicate this play? Do, are these offsetting fouls? No. No, they are not. We have an action. And then during a dead ball, we have another action. One is a live ball foul. The other is a dead ball foul, right? We're at status. We're experts at status. Live ball, dead ball. Hey, we can do that, right? I'm going to do that, that. So we're going to penalize the first foul, which blocking, intentional, flagrant in any of those events, the who is going to shoot those free throws? The offended player, right? Great. We got that. All right. So our offended player is going to shoot. And then we have a retaliatory fighting action. That player is now disqualified by rule for fighting. Who's going to shoot the free throws that result from that, right? So in the first our offended player is no longer in the game. Their substitute would shoot the two free throws for either the intentional or the flagrant. I'm going to say the crew's coming in and saying, partner, that is not a block. That's <laughs> We're upgrading that play. Come on now, right? So the substitute for the white player will attempt those. We're going to do them in order. We'll attempt two free throws. And then any team member or eligible substitute will attempt the free throws for the uh, punch by white. And we will resume with black having a division line throw in opposite the table as a result. That would be our ruling on the play. So understanding how to properly adjudicate these plays is critical. And that's why we're looking at these videos. Okay, let's take a look at another video. All right. This is a great clip. They're all great. It's just, you know, anytime we're looking at game video and we can analyze habits and fundamentals and say, oh, I see myself in that play. That's exactly what I would have done. Right. It's like, well, now what would the better thing to have been done? Right. So we're looking at habits and fundamentals here. chaos at the bench, right? Anytime we have a, uh, this, any kind of scenario like that, that, this that occurs in the bench area, holy cow, everything gets a lot more complicated. But what do we have on this play, right? If we start at the beginning, come on now, is we have a tra traveling violation ruled, And then two players, one of the players who traveled, and then another player who was not involved in the play, just start going at it. It goes into one of the team's benches. And then we have players from white in shooting shirts appearing in the screen. 
We've got uh, a, a bit of chaos. There's some people coming onto the floor, but not, you know, not like a melee where, where things are going on, fights, uh, punches are being thrown. Right. So first of all, right, calling official, we see it all of the time as a point of emphasis. Play, you know, officials should not turn around and not observe players after a foul ruling, after a violation ruling, etc. When we have this situation, now the, the temperature of the game might have been super tame, right? And everybody gets into their comfort level and their habits, etc. But the like I was uh, talked about earlier, the N NBA officials have the ability to uh, do a traveling violation and looking the other way. Why? Because they have two expert partners who are going to observe the players for them, and they can always, always, always go to video if anything happens untoward that they need to look at, right? As high school officials, we do not have that luxury, right? So as the, the center official on the play also looks away, right? These are habits. It's just, there's just straight up habits. If you have that habit in your game, you need to recognize it and say, well, what could I do differently, right? What's going to happen next year for the center official? He's going to bring in substitutes, etc. Now we've got engagement with the coach as well. Um, the, the offensive coach, right? This is second half action, um, which distracts our official on the play. Everybody else is low energy, but these two are just like, you know, black four looks like a good tackler. We've got a teammate coming in. That teammate, what were they doing? Are they fighting or are they trying to prevent the fight, right? We can have player, right? Two players engage and, my, and the teammate comes in between them or, or with them, right? The coming in and being having proximity with them does not mean they are fighting. They may, may be our best ally at trying to prevent things from escalating. So we have to make those judgments. We have to have the awareness of that situation when it occurs. Right? We've got one official. He is in there. He's trying to position his body between risky, right? That's just risky behavior um, in that instance. Let's see what happens. So it's our center official who says, look, I'm no, no, no. The center goes in. He's going to try to help the, tr the new lead, right? Says, I'm the big picture guy. I'm going to stand back. I see these players leaving the bench. Are they participating? Are they not participating? Right? That's what we need. We need somebody to have the big picture view and awareness of that. The other two officials who are in there cannot. Right. And then we're going to have to piece it all together. Right. Can we say that anybody from red or from black rather left the bench area to participate in the fight? I mean, the fight came to them. <laughs> so. It looks to me like white one is all about pulling that that uh, teammate off the off. Players coming in. The assistant coach is there trying to like, yeah, it's messy. It's messy. All right. Let's see what we have on this play. So how would, let's say, let's, let's say that all we have on this play is the two players fighting. That we consider the actions of the teammate of white one here. We consider his actions to be a peacemaker, not participating in the fight. That would be my judgment from what we see here. You see, he's, re he's grabbing his, his teammate around the waist. Uh, don't see any punches being thrown. But, all right, so we're going to just say the two players, flagrant, all good. Now, what else do we have? We know that uh, we don't see any black team members leave the bench area when a fight may occur, right? We really can't have that on this play, but we do have teammates for white leaving the bench and coming down. We got one who comes down and then he goes back and then he comes down again and has to be restrained, right? So at minimum, we have two players leave for white leaving the bench when a fight is occurring or may break out. So we have two flagrants for the fighting 
and that situation as well. How are we going to adjudicate that situation? By rule, we have flagrant disqualifying dead ball tacticals on the fighters. One team foul added to the team foul count for each team. In addition, two flagrant technical fouls for players leaving the bench area when a fight may occur or is occurring. Those players are disqualified by rule. Two additional team fouls are added to the team foul count. In addition, an indirect technical foul is assessed to the head coach for the actions of their bench personnel. Since they did not participate, no matter what the number was, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only one indirect technical foul is assessed to the head coach. And in addition, the technical fouls that are assessed on the bench personnel, a maximum of two free throws will be awarded if there are a disparate number between the teams in this situation. That would be the proper adjudication on this play, right? What was So we're not going to be going to point of interruption. We'll be shoot, uh, Black will be shooting two free throws. Does that seem fair? And the ball at the division line opposite the table, right? So sometimes we <laughs> presents a challenge to find a fair solution here, but that's how we would adjudicate by rule on this play. So this is, I mean, the, the thing about this play is what makes it challenging is the fact that it occurs basically on the bench, <laughs> certainly in the bench area, but on the bench, through the bench, right? Presenting a, an imbalance between players leaving the bench, et cetera, but we just need to know how to adjudicate these plays by rule. Fantastic. How about a bonus play? Let's take a look. Interesting play in that there seems there is uh, it's truncated, but there's a, a intentional foul occurs. Immediately, the teammate retaliates by pushing the offending player. Right, so an intentional foul has occurred. Center official has eyes on the play. Right, and initial action is that considered to be fighting? That would be a judgment, but in the end. <laughs> You know, since it escalated in the fashion that it is, right, we could say, uh, you know, that player is fighting. Was his opponent fighting? These are the judgments we have to make. We look at the habits of the officials. The one official is like completely away from the action. He's observing players off the benches, is going to have all the information. If this game is going to resume, right, anytime it rises to this level, and depending on the amount of people who are disqualified by rule. We may not continue this game. So we have two officials at the spot. One is like, you know, we, we could try to help the players stay back, stay back. They continue to come. We're just taking numbers, etc. So if we look at the habits of the crew on this play, there's a lot of positives, right? Our center official on the original call is in good position, has the intentional foul, right? which is great. Maybe we could have had more proximity. We don't see the foul itself. Was it something that we knew there would be immediate retaliation for, et cetera? Um, we'd like to see proximity, but we're here, moving in, trying to prevent the one official, the third official, I'm going to the spot. No, wait, I need to open up and see. That's fantastic, a fantastic habit to have in that situation. So, if we are going to resume the game, and even if we are not going to resume the game, right? Let's say this game is this game is over. We still have to assess the proper penalties on the play. So everybody who left the bench, that's a flagrant technical foul by rule. Anybody who participated, that's a flagrant technical foul by rule. We know that in this game, there will be no further penalties for those players, but many leagues, associations, states, et cetera, locales, 
have additional penalties where players are going to miss resulting games and they may have some accrual system of bad behavior one plus bad behavior two leads to another penalty, et cetera. That's not, that's not under our control. That's not for us to administer. Uh, we, you know, we have, that has no impact on us, but we have to properly assess the penalties, even if this game is not going to assess the correct fouls in this instance, even if the game is not going to continue so that others above our pay grade administrators, um, uh, league commissioners, et cetera, will assess the proper penalties on those players in the future, right? So our work is not done on this play. Hey, thanks for joining us today on Five Play Friday. Hope you found some value. If this is the content that you find value as a basketball official, time to do all the things, the like and the subscribe and the notify so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Feel free to join us for our live streams every Wednesday and Friday so we can all get better together. Appreciate that. Allow me to thank our fantastic Show supporters, Dan Kelly, Tyler Matlock, Thomas Hennion, Mike Wong, and Phil Harmonic. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always buy us a coffee. I'll put a link above and in the show notes below. Fantastic. Additional video content is for, available for you here. Up top, we have the master class on fighting. Uh, here is the five play. Here's the basketball rules expert on fighting. Check those out. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.